church as a whole has been tried yeah. yes. the past three years particularly yeah 2020 was something else 2021 was right behind it 2022 we're kind of getting a little bit of a break but we don't know what in the world's going to happen next with all amen. the wars and the rumors amen. of war amen. and everything that we hear out of washington and all the different countries of the world we are living in perilous, precarious times, Amen. troublesome times. And it's exactly what Jesus prophesied would happen. 
Amen. In the last days, perilous times would come. Amen. That's dangerous times. Amen. But what does the people of God need to do? Amen. That's you and I. And, I, and I. and I'm saying that believing that Amen. all of you here are born again. Amen. That you love Jesus with all of your heart. Amen. That you have made your preparations to go to heaven <coughs> and not to hell. Amen. Amen. That's a preparation everybody's got to individually make. You must be born again. Amen. So I want to talk to you tonight as if every one of you has made that decision and that you are a child of God. Because empowerment is what Jesus promised us. He didn't promise us that we would have a, a lifestyle here on planet Earth with all the troubles, the trials, the temptations, and the fighting of the devil without empowering us to have victory over all the power of the enemy. He left a body of people here, a church, full of the Spirit of God that actually turned the world upside down. Amen. Amen. 2,000 years ago. Now think about this. There's no television, no radio, no kind of communications whatsoever except word of mouth. There was no telephone call to anybody. No point in printing up a flyer to send it out. There was no printing press. Amen. There was, everything had to be handwritten. So if the, the, the letters that we read in the New Testament were all handwritten and copied and copied and copied over hundreds and hundreds of years before there was ever even a printing press. Amen. But back then, they turned the world upside down. Yeah. And not just the apostles, but the church as a whole. Yes. They understood that they had been empowered that the Lord Jesus had promised them to wait for the promise of the Father. After that, which when the promise came, they would receive power. Amen. And they would receive power to be witnesses of Him in Jerusalem, in Judea, and to all the world. That power was going to enable them to reach a lost and dying world without any kind of communications except the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if you ever thought about that or not, but I have not thought of how in this world yeah. that about 120 people there at the day of Pentecost in which turned the world upside down from that point on <laughs> without any kind of communications. Look at the yeah. difficulty we have trying to get a message out today. Yeah. We've got Facebook, we've got the internet, all kinds of different uh, social media outreaches that we can get on, YouTube and television, radio, telephone, you know, texting and all kinds of, I mean, look at the problem we have reaching the world today with an understanding of what Jesus taught the disciples. We have a problem, and that's with communication, but yet we're the most communicative people that has ever lived. The world is so small now. Yeah. That's why you hear when Russia gets defeated in a battle in Ukraine, you hear it before the battle is even over with. Correct. You hear it before the battle is even over with. Or if Russia wins a part of the, the battle or it overtakes a city, you hear that news somehow or another while it's happening. As I speak here tonight, I mean, we could, you could t turn on the TV. If there was an event happening in India, you would be able to see what's happening in India right now. That's the kind of world that we live in. So we're living in a world that's gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, communicating once. We're communicating with one another. But one of the things that's not being communicated is the empowerment that I'm speaking of. Because if we had been able, and I'm talking about preachers, if preachers had been able to convince the church of what Jesus said would happen to them, and that in reality they were empowered, over all the power of the enemy, we would have not have suffered so much loss of lives and sickness and all that's happened during the past few years. You understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you that we have the power to overcome COVID-19. We had it then, we have it today. Amen. We have power to overcome sickness. We have power to live godly and holy in this present world. Amen. Jesus has empowered us. Amen. He gave us the right. He gave us the ammunition to fight against the devil. Amen. Amen. Notice he, he's already given us everything that we need. Yes. 
Come on. Amen. There's a scripture where Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Set you free. And I've heard many people preach about that, and I've preached about it a lot of times myself. But there's one thing that we miss sometimes in that declaration, and that is this. It's the truth that sets you free, yes, but without your knowledge of that truth, Amen. you can't be set free. Amen. So it's what truth that you know is what really sets you free. If a truth came to you and you all of a sudden realized that you already have what the Bible says is power when you got born again, when you got saved, when you got filled with the Spirit of God, there was an anointing and a power that came into your life. Without understanding that, that power would lie there dormant because it's not being brought out. Your realization of your mind is not figured out that you do have that power until you take the Word of God and you read the Word of God where Jesus says, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will harm you. When you read the Word of God that Jesus spoke, and, and said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Yes. In my name, they Amen. shall cast out devils. Right. They shall lay Amen. their hands on the sick, and they <laughs> shall recover, and on and on it goes. And then when you read that word, something begins to stir in your soul. Yes. And it is an awakening that Jesus is speaking to you. And he's telling you, this is the truth I want you to know. I want you to know that I have given you power. I want you to know I have given you authority. I want you to know that I place that power within you to use for the benefit of your family, your friends, your church folks that you love, your neighbors, to provide that to, for not just for yourself, but for the world. Amen. And that's what the disciples <clears throat> understood. When Jesus sat there and told them, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I tell you, you can say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it will obey you. Amen. It will obey you. We read that and we think, man, look at that. Ain't that something? And that's all we think about. We don't think about the Lord is telling you that. Yeah. That if you had the faith <coughs> as a grain of mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds, if you had just a little bit of faith, you can move a mountain. Lord. But that's what the Lord Jesus said. Now, how difficult is that for you to believe? It is almost impossible with a carnal mind. Amen. It's almost impossible with natural reasoning. Because you look at a mountain, you know, and say, how in this world could I move a mountain? That can't be right. But yet, that is exactly what Jesus taught the disciples. All you need is a little bit of faith. And you can speak to that mountain, <clears throat> and it will move at your word. Yeah. And then we look at the Word of God and we see where the, the Lord Jesus has spoken so many different things to us to give us an idea of what we can really do, amen, as an individual. But yet, what do we do? We come to church or we seek out, we try to seek out somebody that's anointed. We try to find somebody to pray the prayer of faith for us. Yep, we try amen. to find an individual somewhere whether dead or alive, we search the internet, we're trying to find a word from God, we're trying to find a revelation from God, we're trying to find somebody that's got the power to heal us or to deliver us or to set us free all the time, the word of God telling you that yeah. you have Amen. power Amen. inside of you. Amen. And that's what we're trying to get across here. That's what this word about empowerment, revival really means to me. Amen. It is a reviving of faith. It is reviving of the Word of God, the knowledge that God had given us by His Word that He has empowered us to live the kind of life that He has chosen for us to live and to be the overcomers that He has ordained for us to be. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So if we had been able to communicate that, like we try to preach it, we try to bring it to, to people's attention. Look, you don't, you don't need the preacher down the street. You just need to operate in the realm of faith that God has already put in your heart. You have faith to lay hands on your child, and that child will be healed. Amen. You have faith, I mean, it's there in you, but if you never exercise it, if you never use it, what good is it? It's no good at all. So it is the, it is the truth that you know that makes you free. See, Jesus comes to set us free of a lot of things. He, make, he comes to set us free of sin. He comes to set us free from the doctrines and teachings of men. He comes to set us free from religion. 
He come to set us free from so many things. But he also come to set us free from the oppression of the devil and from sickness. Amen? Yes, amen. Because if the Spirit of God is in you, and I believe if you're born again, you have the Spirit of God. You can't be born again without it. So that Spirit, when Jesus talked about when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. So why do you have to continually go to somebody to find truth? Why can't you open up the Word of God? and pray and say, God, I don't understand this Bible, but I know that your word has said that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, would guide me into all truth. Yes. Now, Lord, I'm praying and I'm going to open my Bible up and I don't understand this, but I believe that you're going to inspire me and teach me the word of God. Do you know the Bible says that you have an unction with the Father yes. and you know all things? That unction, that word means anointing. You have an anointing with God the Father, and you know all things. Where do you know all things at? It's in your spirit, man. It's in here. It's not in here. So the knowledge that God is imparting is not in here. It's in here. It's a know you spirit. It's a spirit that says, I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I know I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I know I can do all things, amen, and there's nothing going to harm me. I know I'll have victory over the devil. I know I have power to live godly and holy in this present world. I know I have the power to lay down my habits, amen. I know I have power to do what God has called me to do because the Word says. It's what His Word says. It's not, it doesn't matter what headquarters say. It doesn't matter what some man said. It doesn't matter what the preacher says. All that really matters is what does God say. Amen. Amen. And if God said we have the power that's working in us to do more than we could even think or ask for, why then do we keep seeking for someone else to do something for us? Amen. It's calling empowerment to the people. Amen. <laughs> Empowerment to the believer. And I hate to say it this way, but now, and I'm not going to pick on preachers because some preachers are good preachers. But they are preachers that want you to look at them as the one that has the goods. Amen. And you don't have nothing. Amen. In other words, they want you to look at them as the one that is empowered. Yes. They want you to look at them as the one that they are the gift to you. Amen. Yeah. That the preacher is the gift of God given to you. Yes. And that if you're going to hear from God, you're going to hear it from me. Yeah. If you're going to be healed from God, you're going to be healed when I lay hands on you. That is a way a lot of preachers today look at ministry as if it is, a, and it is a leadership ministry, but it's follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. That's right. No one you always thought, follow Amen. me. If follow me as I follow Christ. So Christ is the one that we're following, the Word of God. But a lot of preachers use that to keep the people not empowered, but always desiring, always seeking, you know, that I've got to call the minister. I've got to call the pastor. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going crazy. I can't, I, I, you know, I, I, my, my knee hurts, my back hurts, my foot hurts. My, you know, I'm hurting everywhere, and, 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 and I've got to call somebody to come pray for me. You know, and we get on the phone, and we can't find anybody. We get on the Internet, and, and we don't know how to get in touch with, you know, Reverend so-and-so. And, so and, 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 and then we get desperate, you know, and we, and we just try to find somebody to pray for us because we, we're sick. All the time, yeah. the power of God, where is it at? It's inside of you. Yeah, come on. The power of God is there. It's for your benefit. Come on. These signs shall follow them that I have ordained. That's not what it says. These signs shall follow them that I give. That's not what it says. These signs shall follow them that I have selected as my special one. No. That's not what it said. No. These signs shall follow them that believe. believe. Yes. So the word believe means have faith in. Man. That's what the word believe means. Have faith in. Have faith in what? Have faith in God? Listen, the devil believes there's one God and they tremble. Yeah, right. You know, everybody believes in God. If you don't believe that, come down south. I'll take it all the stores, all the restaurants, and everybody there believes in God. Every one of them. You know, you're not going to find no matter how drunk they are or how sober they are. If you ask them if they believe in God, yeah, I believe. I believe. Yeah, I believe in God. You don't matter how much they cuss, how much they fuss, how much they sin, how much Amen. adultery they're involved Amen. in, they still believe in God. So it's more than just believing in God. 
Believe me, they're not getting anything from God, but they, yet they believe in God. Amen. They believe there is a creator somewhere. They're not sure about what he is or who he is, but they do believe in God. But that's not good enough. These signs will follow them that believe. believe. Believe what? Believe what? We've got to first believe that he is God, and then he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's, right. that's what we've got to believe. We've got to believe that he's God, and now we've got to believe that he will reward us when we seek him. Amen. In other words, I've got to believe he's God, but I've got to believe he's a rewarder yeah. of them that seek him. Yeah. Yes. You understand what we're saying? Yes. So if I believe that he's God and I believe he's also a rewarder of them that seek him, that means he's going to reward me. He's going to do something for me. He's going to give me something. He's going to either give me healing. He's going to give me deliverance. He's going to give me prosperity. He, he's the Father. He can do all of those things. Yeah. But I have to believe not just that he is God. I believe got to believe that he will receive me, that he will honor my prayer, that when I ask him for something, he's going to give it to me. Are you following me? Amen. That's what we got to believe. But the other thing we got to believe, we've got to believe in ourselves. Yep. We've got to, I've got to believe that I am a man of God. I've got to believe that I'm born again. I've got to believe the spirit of the living God lives in me. I've got to believe that I have been empowered by Jesus Christ himself. I've got to believe that too. And you've got to believe that. Because when you don't believe in yourself, you're losing the battle right there. Amen. Because now you're diminishing your authority with God. Amen. And, you're, and you're actually adding your problem with the devil. Because the devil knows who you are. You're the one that don't know who you are. I'm going to say it again. The devil knows who you are. Yes. But as long as he's got you trapped. Yeah, if you don't know who you are, you've been defeated. That's right. The yeah. power that you have, it doesn't do you any good. Because you don't really realize that power is for you. Yeah. It's the power. I believe the preacher's got it. I believe the apostles got it. I believe the prophets got it. I believe the pastors got it. But I don't believe I got it. Come on. You've already lost the battle. These signs will follow the preacher. No. These signs will follow the pastor. No. These signs will follow the apostle. No. These signs will follow the prophet. No. These signs will follow the evangelist. No. no. These signs shall follow them Damn. that believe. Somebody that will believe the word of God. They will believe what the testimony of the scripture is for you and I. Amen. Amen. See, the Bible is a testimony. The New Testimony is the testament, the New Testament of Jesus Christ. It is a testimonial of what God will do for you and I. The Old, the old Testament, the Old Covenant was done away with. We have entered into a new covenant with God, a new contract, so to speak, with God. We're now in a new covenant relationship with God that the Jews did not have. The early, the early people before Christ came didn't have that covenant, that type of covenant with God. They had a covenant of laws. And if you keep this, if you keep that, if you do this, if you do that, I'll do this. If you don't do that and that, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this to you. That was the covenant of the old covenant. But the new covenant, the new, somebody say new covenant. New covenant. Uh, it is a covenant, a relationship covenant between you and God. And God is saying, if you will believe in the, in the bloodshed of Jesus Christ, that Jesus came and died on the cross for you, that he shed his innocent blood for your sins or for your deliverance and your healing, and yet he died, but yet he rose again the third day. If you will believe the testimony of Jesus and his apostles that were eyewitnesses to that event of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing you've got to believe. That's why there's so much battle against the resurrection today. Nobody don't like the word resurrection. They yeah. love the word rapture. Yeah. Nobody likes the word resurrection. But what we're going to see in coming is a resurrection. Amen. <laughs> Amen. A resurrection. Amen. But if we believe the testimony of what Jesus did, what Jesus said, and the authority that Jesus said he would give the believer, we have a new covenant relationship with God. God said, I'm going to do this. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I'm doing this for you. For the believer, you can lay your hands on the sick and they're going to recover. 
You cast out devils. It's going to happen. Are you listening to me? A covenant, a relationship. God said, if you do that, because I've done this, that's the covenant. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I've got it figured out. You've given me a contract. You're not going to break your contract, your covenant, and I'm not going to break mine. Do you realize most of us have broken our covenant with the Lord? Yeah. Because we have not took to his, our heart his words. When he said, I indeed baptize you with water. You remember the testimony of John the Baptist? I indeed baptize you with water. But one is coming after me that is mightier than I, whose shoelaces I'm not worthy to unloose. Oh, yeah, he said, I baptize with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Amen. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. Yeah. So when that event happens in your life, they complete. You've accepted the blood. Amen. You've accepted the blood atonement, the sacrifice for your sin. You've received the Spirit, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. All agree in one. You've been baptized in water. Your part of the bargain has been fulfilled. Now all you have to do is believe. Yes. Believe. Somebody say believe. Believe. That's a big word. Amen. But it's not a real big word. But it's a big word when it comes to when you're facing the devil. Amen. Yeah. When you're Amen. facing bad news. Yeah. When you're facing someone that's standing above you with a white jacket on and one of the little things hanging around his neck and he looks like he's smarter than everybody around there. And he tells you bad news. And you know what I'm talking about. You might have felt good when you went in there. But then he's going to tell you bad news. It's called a doctor. And when he tells you that bad news, what happens? All of a sudden, yeah. You walked in there, you felt pretty good. You got the bad news, what happened there? You walk out of there depressed. Mm -hmm. You walk out of there with your head down. You have been defeated. You have let one person, one man, defeat you with one statement. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of times that you have cancer. A lot of times that you have heart trouble. Yep. A lot of times it's this or it's that. It's something deadly, something bad has happened. And you're, and you know, our brother, uh, a chap was giving me a testimony. I'll tell you about it later. I had a doctor told him, he had, I think I hear a leaky heart. Mm -hmm. You know, he was feeling fine. He was feeling great. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, leaky heart. What do you mean leaky heart? My heart leaking? Where's it going? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Leaky heart? Well, that gets on your mind, see, and it just robs you of faith. Next thing you know, Brother Chad, he's feeling worse. Day by day, he's feeling worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. But one day he wakes up and says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's wrong with me? I ain't got no leaky heart. Thank God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right. I'm not going to accept no leaky heart. I'm not going to accept this. Yeah. Man. But most of us never get to that point. Man. And he'll tell you if he testifies about it. He'll tell you once he made up his mind. Hey, I've not got no leaky heart. Yeah. And all of a sudden he starts feeling great. Yeah, come on. He's ready to run, you know, one of those races that run. He's ready to do whatever's got to be done, man. He's working day and night now. Yeah. But before he had to leave your heart because somebody told him that. Come on. It's called robbing you of your faith. Yeah. Robbing you of your rightful place with God. Come on. Now listen, I realize every one of us would leave this planet by death. A planet appointed a man wants to die and then the judgment. Amen. Unless we're here when Jesus comes back. And then some of us that are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the air. That's the word of God. That's the last trump, the last sounding of the trumpets of heaven. At the last trump, Jesus comes back and the church is resurrected. Those that are alive and remain is caught up together with them. Amen. That's going to happen. Yep. But until that time happens, and we don't know when that will occur, but when it, before it happens, you and I, because of our bodies, because of sin in our younger lives, a lot of times, it's going to die. But the Bible says, though the outward man perish, the inner man is renewed yes. day by day. Amen. God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Yes. Now, how did his inner man get affected with that? How did his inner man get impacted with that? Because it's connected to the outer man. We're all, we're, we're, listen, we're one spirit with the Lord. We are spirit people. Amen. But we live in a body. And that body has ears and has eyes. 
And when something is yeah. dumped in these ears that is negative, that is doubtful, that is coming against what God has put in our inner man, it robs us, amen, of faith because, amen, we're listening to a carnal person tell us something carnal and we've accepted it's truth because he's got the white suit. He's got the white hair with a thing hanging around his neck, amen? He looks smart. He don't look stupid. He looks like he's smarter than we are. Somebody say amen. Amen. But we accept all of that, amen, and it impacts our inner man. Yes. When he woke up from that oppression that happened because of what was said, his inner man come alive, see? It impacted the outer man. He could have had a leaky heart. It could have. But see, he's rejecting that. He's accepting it at first, but his inner man is working on it. And that spirit man said, no, you ain't. You're too young to die. You ain't got no leaky heart. If you are, I'm going to fix it. That inner man says, fight without outer man. That outer man said, no, he told me I was going to die. He told me I had cancer. He told me I had this. No, he's smarter than everybody in that hospital. He's the best doctor around. He done told me I'm going to. But your inner man said, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's not right. That's not right. Or the inner man could be saying, you may be sick, but I'm going to heal you. Don't forget what the Word of God said. Don't forget what the Word told you, amen. That you're one spirit with the Lord, amen. You've got power and you've got authority over the enemy, amen. The Word of God keeps coming. The inner man begins to build himself up. And then when it comes to that point, amen, it impacts the outer man, and then the outer man is healed because of the faith that's in the inner man, because it's connected to Christ. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. So my advice, when you get into trouble, when you hear bad news, reject it. Amen. Go to prayer. Amen. Say, God, now what about this? This doctor's told me I had this. Well, this doctor told me I had that. And you can say this, you can say, Lord, with the effects that I see on my skin and on my hands, I see myself crinkling. Mm -hmm. And I know that what he's saying is, is somewhat true because my hands are crinkling. And I'm getting old, Lord. But Lord, I need my hands. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that this is working on me. But Lord, I need my hands. I got to right. I've got to drive. I've got to do things. I'm working for you, Lord. And you're praying, you're asking God about it. That is getting a breakthrough yeah. in your spirit, man. It's getting a breakthrough to overcome the natural reasoning of everything that you're seeing with your naked eye or you're hearing with your ears, amen. You're, you're getting to that place to start rejecting that, amen, and then begin to walk in faith, amen. See, when you walk in faith, you're not walking by sight, amen. You're not walking by what you see, amen, of your hands getting crippled uh, or a problem with your knees or a problem with your legs or whatever's going on in your life, amen. When you begin to walk in the spirit, man, amen. You're, you're, you're overcoming those natural feelings, amen. And you're building your faith up, amen. And you're getting to that place for your own deliverance, man. Now granted, I know it's harder to pray for yourself yep. than it is for somebody else. Yep. I don't know why. Amen. That's why I thank God for Sister Clinton. <laughs> amen. Yeah. You ought to thank God for a praying wife, a praying husband, a praying friend. Come on, somebody that you, you know is there. Because if your faith is weak for yourself, at least you've got somebody there to partner with. You've got a, a woman of God. You've got a man of God. You've got somebody to partner with. Amen. So when you've got that partner with you, even though your faith may be weak because of the condition you found yourself in, because your eyes are not lying to you, and your, the pain in your body is not a lie, you're really hurting. When you have that unction over someone else, where two can put a thousand to fly, how many yeah. can three put? Amen. So you need sometimes somebody to help you pray. I'm not taking away completely the other person that's needful in your life sometimes. Well, you need two or three to agree, touching any one thing. You need somebody to agree with you. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. Because this empowerment that we're talking about is already there. Amen. You know the Bible says, He that's going to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Amen. Yes. 
You can't separate one. Our, our spirit man is connected to God. It's connected. It's our outer man and our natural reasoning of things. That's where the disconnect is. So we have to work on that. We have to work on that. And the way to work on it is with the Word of God. Amen. We've got to recognize, the Bible says, we're flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. Amen. See, in other words, we are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are the people of God that he has called into this generation to do the works that he's called us to do. What good is it? All of these promises, all of these scriptures. I mean, I've got scriptures out of them. I mean... We're the temple of God. You're the habitation of God through the Spirit. Don't you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Where does God live? He lives in you. We know the Scriptures. We know all of these Scriptures. I've got pages and pages that I can sit here and read them to you. But you've got a Bible. No doubt you've read all of these Scriptures. So what's the, what's the disconnect? The carnal mind. How do I get reconnected? Hook up with the Word of God in your spirit man. Your spirit man already knows what I'm teaching you tonight is truth. That's what your spirit man knows. That's why most of your head is going up and down this way when I'm talking here tonight. Because you know that your spirit man nodding that head. <laughs> Amen. Because your outer man going, oh, no, this can't be true. Amen. So your spirit man is nodding that head in, a, in an agreement, in a, an affirmation. To affirm, I believe, that's the scripture. That's what the word of God says. So your spirit man, see, it's all ready to do the work. You just got to release it. And you release it simply by believing. Somebody say believe. 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 These signs will follow the apostle. No. no. These signs will follow the prophet. No. No. These signs will follow them. Yeah. Believe. Come on. So I gotta ask you, how many of you believe? Come on. Sure. Hey. Amen. So then there's power also in agreement. Amen. Or if two or three agree touching any one thing. Is that what Jesus said? Amen. It'll be done. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He can lose some things and he can bind things. We also have that key, too. It comes with the Holy Amen. Spirit. Right. It comes with the Holy Ghost. So you and I can agree for the impossible to be done. Yeah. How many of you are experiencing something in your life that you would deem impossible? Raise your hand. Anybody here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anybody else? In other words, these seven... There's something in their life. It could be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial. It could be scores of different things. But these seven, there's one thing that they would deem it is absolutely impossible to be done. These seven. They recognize that. Now, now listen, that's not being in denial. That's the truth. I mean, you, it, you, you can run around sick as a dog and say, I'm not sick all day long. You're still sick. No, you're sick. Might as well face the fact you're sick. But these seven, there's, there's something in their life that they know that it is impossible. Now I ask those seven this question. Is it impossible to God? No. 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 All seven says no. Nothing. See, what's impossible to man is possible with God. All things, though, are possible to him that Believe. believes. Wait a minute. Let's think about this. We ask a question about, is there something impossible? Seven answered yes. Seven also answered yes, but with God it's not impossible. In other words, to me, as a man, as a person, it is impossible. It is, it's never going to work. It's impossible. But their faith is in, but with God is possible. Amen? Amen. But then the Word of God says that there's nothing impossible to him that believes. To a person, to somebody that can believe, there is nothing impossible to that person. 
Do y'all believe the Word of God says that? Yes. 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 So then the burden of proof is placed back on the believer. Come on now. Yeah. See, that, that burden of receiving that miracle is right back on the person who's dealing with it. Mm-hmm. I've got a problem I can't solve. But it's a problem God can solve. Yeah. Lord, I can't solve this. But God, you can. This is called, there's nothing impossible to God. But then yet, there's nothing impossible if I can believe. If I can believe, there's nothing impossible for me. It would have to be that way if I can speak to a mountain and it'll move. Now I'm talking about us now, as individuals now. Come on. Yeah. We're going to get in this thing together. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to walk in this together tonight. Because I'm believing for some things that are impossible to be broken tonight. Yes. The, tonight. Yes. Whatever is impossible, I believe it tonight, is the breaking of that is going to begin because of our belief yeah. in what God says. Amen. Amen. It's not a belief in some kind of religion. It's not a belief in Catholicism, Pentecostalism, Charismaticism, Baptistism. It's a belief in the Word of God Amen. that cannot lie. Amen. If we can believe, we're going to see the impossible broken. And it's become become possible. Amen. Have I lost you all? Mm, Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Are you really with me? Yeah. Now, what I'm basing this on is nothing but what the Word of God says. I'm not basing it on any kind of theology. I'm not basing it on any kind of strange teaching. I'm basing it on what God's Word said. These signs shall follow them that believe. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. I'm, I'm based it solely on the word of God. That nothing is impossible. Yes. If we believe. Remember the woman that pressed through. Mm-hmm. That touched the hem of his garden. Man, you God. remember that? Yeah. How many times have I preached it? Zillions of times. If there's such a word. Those zillions of times was this. That woman's faith is what healed her. When Jesus turned, he said, somebody touched me. That woman had pressed through that crowd. Hallelujah. Which was a hard thing to do. I'm not going to get into all of that. But that woman had said to herself in her thoughts, she thought this thought. If I just touch that hem of that garment, I'm going to be made whole. That was the thought she had. And that thought that she had, you know what it did? It germinated a seed of faith in that woman. I really believe it germinated a seed of that faith, of faith in that woman. And that thought, she's actually prophesying. As she's speaking of something to happen, she's prophesying to herself. She didn't tell nobody. She said within herself, if I touch his garment, yes. I'm going to be made whole. She plowed her way through that crowd and reached out. I don't know how to grab that garment. Touched it immediately. Hey, Jesus stopped and turned around and said, uh, somebody touch me. Jesus. And the disciples said, well, everybody's touching you. He said, no. He said, somebody touch me. I felt virtue go out of my body. I feel the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. Somebody touch me. Then she comes and said, Lord, it was I. I did it. He said, woman, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Which is harder for God to do? Your impossible or that impossible? The woman has been to doctors one after another, spent all of her money, yet still she had that issue of blood. Which is easier for God to do? Drive that woman's issue of blood or remove in your problem area and what you need a miracle for? Which is harder for him to do? There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Nothing. Amen. If you and I can touch God, 
The way that little woman touched God with our faith. Yeah. Somebody say, with well, my faith. My, my faith. 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 I gotta believe my beliefs now. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta start doubting my doubts. Yeah. Come on. I, I gotta get rid of every doubt. Spirit of doubt, in the name of Jesus, you leave this place yeah. by the power Amen. of Jesus' name yeah. and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yes. And let the, let the spirit of faith, yes. Yes. let hope be revived. Thank you, Jesus. Let hope be revived Amen. in the minds of God's people. Amen. Jesus. Let's walk in this. Let's, let's see something happen tonight. That's undeniable. That God's word is the truth today, just like it was 2,000 years ago. That God's word is not lying. It is still the truth. Amen. Still God seeking us. Shall I find faith on the earth when I return? Yeah. Jesus said. Will I be able to find anybody that will believe me? That will believe my words? That will believe my prophets? That will believe my apostles? Will I find anybody? You got to make up your mind, Lord. You can find faith in me. Yes. I'm going to believe this. I'm, 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 I'm stepping out of this carnal realm. I'm stepping into this empowerment that God, I know you placed in my body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want those seven to stand up right now. Come on. Come on, stand up right now. Those seven stand up. You, you said you had a prayer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's line up right here. Come on. It's not, it's not going to be a laying on of hands. It's going to be speaking something. Come on. I want us to speak it. Amen. You don't have to speak this out loud. Just a little woman. She, she said it within herself. You understand what I'm saying? God knows your thoughts. You don't have to whisper it. You don't have to yell it. You don't have to scream it. You don't have to lift your voice to God. I do it because I just got a habit of doing it. God's got hard of hearing. He hears perfectly, and he knows your thoughts. So I want us to know this now, every one of us, let us believe. And that little woman said it in herself, Lord, if I touch the hem of that garment, I'm going to be made whole. I want you in your mind, whatever you need, that's impossible to be done, whatever it is, I want you in your mind right now to think those words. Let your mind think, Lord, this thing that I've deemed impossible to man, and it is. But it's possible to you, God, and I am believing. I am believing in the impossible to be done in my life. I'm believing, Lord, in the impossible. I'm not going to sit back. I'm not going to stand back. I'm not going to sit down. I'm not going to give up. Lord, I'm believing because of the Word of God that's been ministered tonight, because of the Word of God that has been written by holy men of old and given unto us, and we might believe, I believe. In the name of Jesus, that tonight, somebody say tonight, there is a beginning of a breaking of this honor thing that is that is so impossible and God's going to break it. They say God's going to break it. And it's going to be the possible is going to occur in Jesus' name. Now I want you to raise your hands. I want you to raise our hands and I want to say, Father, I thank you. Come on, let's say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you've answered what has been deemed impossible. Thank God, there's nothing impossible to you, and there's nothing impossible to me because I believe your word in Jesus' name is done. It is done. Somebody say it is done. And that's good the Lord will have you. Jesus. Somebody say, it's done. It's done. Take somebody's hand, shake her hand, say, it's done. Say, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Break the Lord. You can be seated. It's done. You can be seated. You can be seated.